What's up guys, Matt Laidlaw here, coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So I am at the Los Angeles Convention Center right now. It's August 24th, 2017. So this is where they're announcing all the new 2018 model year models. So obviously the big announcement this year is the new soft tail frame chassis. So yeah, I'm going to be going into details uh, on this. I was able to enlist some of the help of the head engineers on this project. So instead of me just kind of giving my limited knowledge at this point in time, uh, I have some of the main engineers who designed and put this whole project together uh, interviewed here today. And they're going to be going over some of the details on this thing. So yeah, all the, the big news guys is there is no more Dyna chassis. They took the Dynas and the Softtails and they put them on one common frame now. So they took three of the popular Dyna models, the Dyna Street Bob, the Fat Bob, and the Lowrider, and they are now on what Harley Davidson is calling their Softtail chassis. This chassis is brand new, redesigned from the ground up. This chassis has the new Milwaukee 8 engine that was just announced last year. So all the soft tails have the Milwaukee 8 engine in there in a brand new frame. The other four soft tails that are in this lineup, uh, in addition to these three Dyna, previously Dyna models, are you got your, your Heritage, your Slim, your Fat Boy, and your Breakout. You can also get, in a few of the different models, you can get the 107 or you can bump it up to a 114 on some of these models as well so come in check it out guys and here's a detailed review of all the new stuff for 2018. Right, guys so i'm here with ben wright he is the chief engineer for this brand new soft tail chassis and he's going to go over some of the details with us talk us through it and do some of the more technical stuff that you know i'm not really 100 percent real knowledgeable on yet but this is the man he's the head behind all this stuff so take us into it ben all right thanks matt well, I'm, we're gonna we're standing here in front of what we call kind of a naked rolling chassis, and this really strips everything off the bike and lets you see what I would call the bones of the bike, the new architecture. So let's start with uh, the crown jewel at the center of the bike is the new Milwaukee 8 powertrain, and of course, this chassis was designed to accommodate and work in tandem with the new Milwaukee 8. Um, you can see uh, we have a brand new frame. Th this project started brand new, um, top to bottom. So there is there's no carryover frame, swing arm. Everything is brand new, and it starts with a completely new perimeter frame. The heart of the frame is the backbone, of course. Um, we had some major goals with this program. One was to improve the ride handling capability of the bike. Second is to improve the comfort of the bike. Those are two different things. You can have a great handling bike but it may not have a comfortable ride. And a third major item of the program was weight reduction. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on how we reduce the weight. So, as I mentioned before, the heart of the, the frame here is the backbone. And it, it is coupled closely here with a brand new monoshock uh, suspension in the rear. And if you look at the layout of the bike, you can see the way we laid this out is the, the Mono shock is in line with the backbone of the frame, and that was done intentionally so that we have very efficient load transfer from the mono shock into the backbone. We're in straight tension and compression here, avoiding a lot of big bending loads that would force us to design a more heavy uh, structure. So it's a very efficient design. Um, overall, we had goals to significantly lose the, increase the chassis stiffness. The frame by itself is more than 65% stiffer than a current soft tail frame and more than 90% stiffer than a current Dyna frame. Now a customer may not care about stiffness. What they care about is how their bike handles, especially when it's loaded up in a turn and everyone knows what a bike feels like that um, isn't stiff enough, especially when you have it heavily loaded. You hit a bump in a turn and the bike starts to feel a little loose. This chassis is substantially stiffer and you will feel more planted, more in control uh, at all points uh, in your riding experience. Um, this frame is a modular design. It enables us to accommodate all the different models that you see behind me. And we do that through this flexible steering head. We have different steering head angles that we weld into the frame. So for instance, on a breakout, we have a raked out 34 degree steering head. 
On a Fat Bob, we have a 28 degree steering head, which is more stood up for that more performance orientation. Um, and for the balance of the other six bikes, it's a 28 degree steering head. Um, we also have two different frame widths. The Fat Boy and the Breakout have a 240 rear end, rear tire. So we have to have a wider swing arm, and we also have a little bit wider frame to accommodate that. Um, so let's let's talk about kind of the heart of this thing, which is the monoshock. Why did we choose the monoshock? Um, quite a few benefits to the monoshock. I already talked about the way it's laid out. Um, that helps us improve the stiffness without increasing the weight. The monoshock also has a, a couple of different uh, versions that we offer. This this particular version has a mechanical adjust preload. Um, every bike comes with a spanner wrench that you can easily adjust. You can see the numbers on here. That will allow you to adjust your suspension very easily to um, your weight or the amount of cargo that you have. Um, there's two other versions, depending on which bike you look at, that are hydraulic adjust. Um, those are even easier to adjust. There's an, uh, you don't see it here, but there's a hydraulic uh, cylinder that mounts here and it's an 8mm wrench to quickly dial it up or down. And on three of the bikes, over on the right side of the bike, there is an external adjustment where you can easily adjust it without any tools and without removing the seat. The reason that's important is this monoshock now has the ability to carry a lot more load. We've nearly doubled, and in some cases we've more than doubled, the amount of payload capacity of these bikes. And what that means is that you can easily and quickly adjust to your rider weight and get the suspension set for your, your loading condition. And you can do that very easily. In comparison today on a soft tail, for instance, we have the low uh, puller shocks underneath the powertrain. Um, they work great, but they're very difficult to adjust. Most customers don't even know how to do it. So therefore, they're probably bottoming out more than they need to because they haven't adjusted them to the proper conditions. The last thing I'll talk about is weight reduction. Um, we took weight reduction very seriously on this program. We know that um, our bikes, right, if you don't design these properly, you're going to have a heavier bike and we wanted to go the other way. We need to reduce the weight and weight is a, is a huge benefit to the customer from the moment you get on the bike and you pick it up off the side stand, from moving it around your garage, you get on it and ride it, and you will feel right a light bike versus a heavy bike. And then, of course, when you're out riding, the nimbleness of light weight and the controllability to be able to flick the bike is extremely important. So we started this program out with very aggressive goals on how we would reduce weight and what the targets would be. And every single part on this bike had a weight reduction target of how much it had to weigh. And that was just as much a consideration when we determined what the designs would be as, as any other parameter. So overall, we've significantly reduced the weight of these bikes. Most bikes weigh less than, or uh, we've lost about 30 pounds or more on some bikes. For instance, uh, the breakout bike, we've, we've reduced the weight of that bike by 35 pounds. Wow. How have we done that? I already mentioned the frame and the swing arm, very efficient design. We've lost about 15 to 18 pounds overall with the frame and swing arm. And we've also lost a pound, two pounds, a half a pound, a quarter pound. Every single part on this bike um, had to lose some weight. And when you have hundreds of parts on the bike, it adds up. So it's, you know, like we say in the financial, well, every penny matters. Well, every ounce mattered on this bike, and that's how we got to more than 30 pounds of weight reduction. Awesome. The other thing you may not hear much about, but we've spent a lot of time designing uh, the side stand so that we get a very uh, optimal angle that the bike sits on when it's parked. So that also helps with the, the uh, nimble feel off the side stand um, when we design it such that the bike isn't leaning over too much, but it's leaned over enough that it's very stable when it's on an uneven surface. We've also, uh, on soft tail models especially, we used to have the oil tank under the seat, and that was a great classic design, but we've gone to a underslung oil tank on the powertrain, so that's also now lowered the center of gravity on the bike, 
It has <laughs> removed the heat source from underneath the rider, which has a benefit of thermal comfort. And it also enabled us to, to package all the electronics that you don't see here, of course, underneath the seat in a very concealed way um, that, you know, customers don't really care about where the ECM is and, and where the ABS module is. But that gave us the, the room to package all of the, the guts of the bike in, in a way that is very clean and efficient. So overall, um, you can't see it here, but of course if you're on this bike and riding it, these bikes are better in every way possible when you're out on the road as compared to our current product bikes. You will feel the lightness the minute you get off the side stand, you start moving the bike around, and especially then when you start riding the bike, the precision, the responsiveness, lower steer efforts, how planted the bike feels, um, it, it will make you a better rider, a more confident rider, you're feeling more connected to the road. Um, all you have to do is get customers on your bikes, Matt, and they will understand what I'm talking about. It is hands down the best cruiser lineup that we've ever built. And looking forward to your uh, dealership getting them in and selling them to your customers. Awesome. So the, the Dyna guys will be okay then? Is that what you're saying here? The Dyna guys have nothing to worry about here. I know, uh, you know it's kind of a regional thing, especially out on the West Coast. What I would say is it doesn't say Dyna on it and it doesn't have exposed rear shocks. If, they, if you can get past that and I can get your butt on a seat and take this bike out for a ride, um, you'll see what I mean. And if you're wondering if these bikes will do wheelies, yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> that was the elephant in the room that uh, everyone was hoping you'd, you'd save, yeah. and you said it. So uh, they will do burnouts and wheelies just fine, guys. Um, Absolutely, and you better, uh, the power to weight ratio on these bikes, I told you before, 30 pounds less with a Milwaukee 8 powertrain that is substantially torquier and more, more horsepower. Um, it's, the, it's the right combination of less weight, more power. The power to weight ratio on these bikes with a 107 is in the neighborhood about 15% better. And if four of the bikes, we have 114 cubic inch motors in them and they're about 25% better in the power to weight ratio. Wow. So it, it's phenomenal acceleration. That is huge. Okay guys. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. All right. So I want to thank Ben again for taking the time on the spot to do that product walkthrough. Uh, he was extremely busy that day, as I'm sure many of you can imagine, and he did it all in one take with no advance notice, so thank you again. So here's a shot of the two swing arms that are available for the soft tails this year that Ben was referring to. So one of them is wider to accommodate the 240 millimeter rear tire. So that's for your breakout and your fat boy. This is a picture of the modular cable, uh, clutch cable they have this year. They make it a lot easier to change out the clutch cable if you're changing bars and going to a longer cable for like taller handlebars or something like that. So it makes it you know a lot less you know labor hours to change out the, the clutch cable because you, you don't have to take off the, the side transmission cover anymore. So like I mentioned before, the Sawtails all have the Milwaukee 8 engine which was launched with the Touring, the FL line in the start of the 2017 model year. So they did make some variations to this Milwaukee 8 that enables it to be used in this Softail platform. I'm going to take you guys over to another one of the engineers that helped apply this Milwaukee 8 engine to this new Softail chassis. We're going to talk about the new Softail engine for the uh, Milwaukee 8. If you go from the back wall of the cam chest forward up to the top of the engine, the uh, part numbers and uh, the, the internals are effectively the same as the FL Milwaukee 8. It has the same balance drive in front, uh, the difference being that the FL in 2017 had a 75% balance factor for primary shaking forces. This, is, this um, balance shaft is identical to the FL and there's an identical one also in the rear of the engine which you can't see in this cutaway, making the balance drive layout very comparable to the twin cam uh, uh, balanced engine. It's just the drive has gone from a chain driven to a gear driven. And you can see the sub gear here, which um, keeps the mesh constant bike to bike uh, over temperature and over the life of the vehicle. Balance drives are driven by a gear on the left side of the uh, crank, which is seen just uh, there. Okay. As I said, 
from a base engine standpoint, um, that's effectively the difference. It's all of the soft tails are oil cooled. It does have its own dedicated oil manifold because of the return line being different to the, the sump. The sump, oil sump, is below the transmission as with the uh, 2017 FL. So it's not, uh, you know, in the horseshoe of the prior uh, soft tail. This is the oil sump here? Down here, yep. Okay. The drain. The gear cluster of the transmission, effectively the same uh, part, the same drive. It is uh, a different transmission case, and there are two different cases for the uh, standard and the wide rear tire, such as the Fat Boy and the Breakout get the wide transmission, where it's shifted over here. The inner primary cover is different between the narrow and the wide. Interesting. The, co the compensator is dedicated to the, uh, the standard and the wide transmission. And uh, if I had the parts side by side, it'd be very clear that the, the uh, primary chain is moved outboard. So the primary and the transmission case are different with the wider bikes? Yes. Being the Fat Boy and the Breakouts? Yes. Okay, interesting. The clutch pack is identical to the FL, but the clutch assembly is different. In the FL, we have the assistant slip with the hydraulic system. Here on the cruiser, we have uh, an assistant conventional. There is no slip clutch in here, uh, and it is cable actuated. Okay, so no hydraulic clutch, and this one, uh, it doesn't have the assist ramps that the uh, the touring one does? It, it has the assist, assist, it doesn't have the slip function. It doesn't have the slip function, okay. So the touring bikes have the slipper clutch, but this one does not have the slipper clutch? Yes. Okay. And then uh, as part of that cable actuation, uh, we could go over here. For people who want to customize their handlebars, it's a very simple matter to remove this clip, slide this sleeve up, and you can go to the service area and practice it yourself, but this is a two-piece clutch. So if you want to change out your handlebars in the 2018 soft tail, it's a very simple matter to, to do that in uh, labor and, and parts. Awesome. Those are the major differences between the uh, 2017 FL and the 2018 soft tail powertrain. So um, just to recap on the counterbalancer, so there's one Back here, I was told behind the the fly between the flywheel and the transmission, yes. and this is virtually 100% counterbalanced at this point. Primary shaking force is 100% counterbalanced. Yes, and uh, both gears uh, have the um, uh, anti-backlash function, as does the uh, first gear drive, which again helps to quiet the uh, any of the mechanical noise you get, particularly when the, the vehicle gets. Uh, Okay. Can, can you explain real quick what the anti-backlash function is to yeah. people who don't understand that? Okay. Uh, well, we have uh, steel gears in uh, aluminum cases, and aluminum expands with uh, temperature at roughly twice the rate as does steel. So these gear meshes are kept uh, very tightly controlled, but over the temperature range of the vehicle, they'll increase slightly, and you'll be able to pick up a little more mechanical noise as the vehicle warms up. What the anti-backlash function does is it spring loads that sub-gear, the very narrow gear that we pointed out uh, both here and at that front balancer, and that, that creates a scissor function. And when you push the meshes together, it aligns it, but it's all, that mesh is now always under preload, so it's always being uh, controlling the lash of the two gears as they drive back and, and, and back drive uh, instantaneously through the uh, combustion cycle. Awesome, interesting. So you, um, uh, comparing it to the uh, uh, twin cam, you should hear uh, a reduction in uh, mechanical noise, clicking, ticking, uh, but you will hear a bit of the, uh, the gear mesh that uh, occurs. That, that gear mesh sound is then gets very consistent vehicle to vehicle over the life of the vehicle and over the temperature uh, the operating range. So when you talk about the, the ticking and the mechanical noise, that's when you're shifting gears primarily, when you're, you're gonna hear a reduction in that, or when you're actually going down the road? It's, it's uh, really where you typically pick that up is it, uh, when you're idling and the vehicle is fully warmed up because then there's no other wind noise and you can really, um, you know, you, you're hearing the exhaust, but you can come over and listen to different parts of the engine. And uh, because we don't have the chain drive any longer, 
Uh, we we uh, have taken out the white noise of the sliding action of that chain drive, working against the uh, the fixed guide and the hydraulic tensioners of the twin cam beta. Also, um, the Milwaukee 8 has one fewer cam chain drive and tensioner system, which is a, a further reduction in that noise. And we've changed the layout of the, uh, the push rods. Uh, the machining of the crankcase is a lot more involved, and that allows us to better align these push rods to the rockers and keep loads low, and that also reduces mechanical noise. Awesome. What, what would you say to people? You know, the, one of the number one questions I always get is why didn't they go to a gear drive cam? Why are they still using a chain driven cam with uh, a tensioner? Um, what people perceive as a plastic tensioner with all the problems that the early twin cam models had. Why, why is Harley still using kind of that, that engineering and way of doing things? Well, uh, what we found, you know, we've investigated you know, multiple means of drive and uh, we uh, did originally have a spring-loaded system on the uh, twin cam. I'm still riding it to work every day on my uh, my soft tail, and uh, we did uh, improve durability and consistency quite a bit in going to a hydraulic system. Um, plastics, um, you know, are, are applied at several points, and we use them uh, appropriately for the temperature and loads, and uh, we find it to be a, uh, a very quiet, reliable system. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right, man. Well, you've been a big help. So I want to thank Ben and Vern again for the time that they spent with me at the show. And guys, just to reiterate, these are the actual engineers that designed the soft tail, this new frame and chassis, and the Milwaukee 8 and the application of that Milwaukee 8 in this uh, new bike. And so these aren't some bro science guys like a lot of the content I see on YouTube. But um, here's another bike, and here's a cutaway of the suspension here. So this is the suspension technology that was applied to the Turing models in the 2017 model year. This is the Showa dual bending valve suspension. It's a technology that Harley-Davidson applied to, once again, their Turing bikes last year. And it's significantly improved over previous generation uh, suspension. And here's a, a cutaway of the tank here. You can see a lot of the electrical is... Uh, stashed away in the, the neck of the frame up there. So one of the things that Harley-Davidson does really, really well is you know they mask all the electrical and, and the unsightly stuff uh, of these bikes to give them a really clean, nice finish. And you know there's a lot of thought that goes into how you know they hide electrical and stuff uh, with with still being able to show the raw engine uh, instead of just covering them up with plastic fairings like a lot of the other competitors do. So here's a cutaway of the air filter there, you can see. And you, know, you can kind of see the uh, rocker arms on the cutaways of the, the rocker boxes there. Not the best shot in the world, but. So there's cutaways of the heat shields where you can kind of see where the uh, O2 sensors go in there. Here's another shot of the the cam chest there. Once again, this is a single cam as opposed to the previous uh, 2017 model year, the soft tails, they were still utilizing the twin cam system. So, yeah, as the uh, engineer said just a minute ago, you know, part of this was to reduce some of the mechanical noise that you got with, uh, you know, the, the twin cam. Here's a shot of the uh, internals of the transmission and this is one of the bikes that has this is a fat boy that has the uh the external knob adjuster for the preload so I'm, at this point you know i'm assuming this is probably the most desirable just for ease of use and you can see there the clear what used to be the oil uh, oil tank is you know still there with the same kind of signature look of the horseshoe oil tank but it now houses uh, a lot of the electrical and you can see the battery under there as well underneath this monoshock so the battery is removed via that cover on the side I'm pretty sure um, the battery I will say is harder to remove on this new soft tail chassis as opposed to the old ones and here you can see another shot of kind of how the, the electrical is run and how everything is packed into this tight compartment here And uh, once again, this is a fat boy, so it utilizes 
with a little bit wider frame and the wider swing arm to accommodate that fat 240 millimeter rear tire. Once again, uh, the fat boy and the breakout are the two that, that utilize this fatter swing arm. And here's another shot of the, the knob adjustment. The old soft tails, you could adjust the suspension as well, but it was so difficult to do it that nobody did it. Here's a shot of the baffles. They're in the mufflers there. The, the new pegs on these bikes are kind of nice because they click into position now, both in the upright position and the down position. So they have more of a, a distinct click to, to kind of stay put. Here's a shot of you know, the O2 sensors. Anyways, it was kind of a, a cool display that Harley Davidson had at the show here, so I decided to give you guys a shot of it. Here's a video playing that kind of demonstrated the, uh, the rear shock action. And when I filmed this video, I had not ridden one of these bikes yet. Uh, since filming this video, um, and now that I'm editing this video together, I have ridden one of these new soft tails and I'm going to be posting all my detailed reviews on these bikes but guys this suspension is far superior to the old soft tail suspension I mean it's not even close I mean you can be you know hauling ass down the freeway and hit large bumps and this, this thing's still not going to bottom out it's it's a really stiff performance suspension is kind of my my best way to describe the new suspension so I'm going to throw a graphic up here on the screen, guys. This is a power to weight ratio comparison of the old soft tails and dynas to the new soft tails and you know the new dynas if you want to call them dynas, but really they're soft tails now. But you can see the the comparison of the 103 to the 107 with the added benefit of the lighter chassis. And you can also see a comparison of the 110s to the 114. And go ahead and pause the video right here if you want to take a look at it longer. But yeah, the power to weight ratios are just a lot better. These things are just you know, a lot quicker bikes, you know, and I know there's a lot of guys that, you know, are really sad about the Dyna family. Uh, right now, guys, you know, I've, I've had several calls since the show of people scrambling to get Dynas right now. And, you know, I tell people, if you want a Dyna, great, I'll get you one, no problem. But if it were me and my money, there's no way in hell I would ever buy an old Dyna over one of these new soft tails. I mean, these new soft tails just destroy the old Dynas. If you put a rider of, of equal skill and ability, one on, hell, we'll, we'll call it the, uh, you know, the, the low rider S, and then you put one on, you know, one of these new soft tails, the guy in this new soft tail will, will smoke him. Um, I mean, just in the turns and the handling, I mean, everything's better. So that's just my two cents on this thing so far. I've, I've ridden the Fat Bob, I've ridden the, uh, the Heritage so far. I'm going to be riding them all, but yeah at this point with this new bike out and, and believe me guys I'm I, I love the Dyna family I, I'm a huge Dyna fan uh, my initial reaction if you guys saw my announcement video I was really sad about the fact that the Dyna's not with us anymore but then I took a step back and really analyzed exactly what it is we're losing and you know it really boils down to two things we're losing the Dyna name and kind of the whole culture and, and image that goes with that name which is a big thing but it really has nothing to do with you know the, the mechanical benefits of the bike and the second thing that we're losing is those two external shocks in the rear which is kind of an iconic look in in the dyno world but what we're gaining as far as overall performance suspension handling lean angle uh, it's just far superior so you know now that i've seen these soft tails i've ridden them uh you know i i would never go back to the dyna and and so you know, you just have to kind of get over the, the name and the fact that, you know, Dynas are now soft tails. You know, the, the amount of memes I've seen out there is just, you know, off the charts going around social media. And, you know, a lot of them are funny, but, you know, Harley knows what they're doing. You know, we, we've been through this before, you know, when, when the FXR was discontinued in 2000. You know, everybody didn't like the Dyna. It was the same situation, same scenario. Everyone was like, bring back the FXR. And, you know, everyone was crying about the Dyna, that it was nothing like the FXR. Here's a shot of the headlamp, by the way, in the, in the rear. 
And, you know, now then now that, you know, years have passed, everyone's all about the Dyna and, you know, we're all crying again about no more Dyna and it's now called the soft tail. So, you know, history kind of repeats itself. And I think once people actually ride this bike, they'll realize that it's just a far superior machine. Another kind of hot discussion that I've heard brought up several times as well is, you know, the, uh, the argument over, you know, why they used soft tail and not Dyna and why Harley Davidson didn't just come up with a whole new name for this, this new platform. And here's kind of my two cents on that. Uh, really, if you, if you look at the motorcycle, some of the key visual characteristics of the bike are that of a soft tail. And, and that being the fact that it looks like a hard tail in the rear, there's no visible suspension, which is kind of the, the main premise behind a soft tail. So you've got that going for it visually and also the fact that the engine is hard mounted to the frame now. This is not a rubber mounted engine. And again, that adds to the rigidity and stiffness of the frame, which then translates into better handling, especially when you're cranking it on it hard through like turns and stuff like that. So you it, it had more characteristics that were in, in line with what makes a soft tail than what makes a Dyna. And into the argument of why didn't they just come up with a whole new name? Well, you know, Harley Davidson already scrapped one huge uh, intellectual property or, or copyright, and, and that is of the Dyna. Uh, maybe they'll bring it back one day, one day, who knows? But, you know, why, why would they scrap the, the name Softail as well? I mean, the word Softail is, is so iconic and so ingrained in Harley Davidson history and culture that it would be stupid for them to scrap both of these names and come up with a whole new name for these these bikes even though you know this soft tail is is mechanically nothing like the old soft tails so i also wanted to comment too before the end of the video here uh, what models they scrapped this year so they no longer have any v rods that's a question i get asked a lot there's no more night rod special there's no more v rod muscle the direction harley davidson is going in now with the revolution engine is with the street platform uh, they've switched over all their nhra drag racers and everything to the street platform so there is no future plans for v-rod uh, they also scrapped the wide glide there's no more wide glide uh, there's no more 1200 t that sportster with the bags on it and all the s models are gone so your lowrider s your fat boy s and your slim s However, in the model designations, there is an S at the end of the bikes that have a 114 engine in them. I believe Harley Davidson is not calling them S models because the S models also had all the blacked out cosmetics that went with the bike as well. When you get the 114 engine in the bikes that are available, uh, it doesn't change the cosmetics at all except for the air cleaner cover and the derby cover. So I believe that's why they're not really calling it quote their s series anymore so anyways guys that concludes this video if you have any questions as always feel free to leave them in the comments below i always try to dedicate a lot of time answering anybody that has questions on these bikes and if you haven't already feel free to subscribe i will be doing my very detailed oriented uh, reviews on all of these bikes individually so be looking for that content coming out soon thanks a lot guys Bye bye